Margareta Heyman was born in Cologne in 1899 and she studied painting there before moving to the Bauhaus School of Design in 1920. She only remained there for one year. She wanted to study ceramics, but she was dissuaded from doing so by the staff there who felt that textile design was a more suitable area for a woman's study. After she'd left the Bauhaus, she took a post in a pottery factory as an artistic designer in order to gain practical experience. And in 1923, she married her first husband, Gustav Lobenstein, and together with his brother, they set up their own pottery factory uh, in Marwitz, just outside Berlin. It was called the Hale Werkstätten for Artistic Ceramics, and the name was formed from a combination of the first letters of their two surnames, H and L, Hale. The Hale workshops expanded rapidly and were very successful under Greta's artistic direction. Uh, her wares were exported to the USA and to the UK, where they were sold at the fashionable London department store, Heels. Her designs were heavily influenced by the Bauhaus ethos and by modernist design and a machine aesthetic. They were simple sculptural forms with minimal decoration, relying largely on coloured glazes and the strength of the shape itself to make their impact. In 1928, however, Greta's husband and her brother-in-law were both killed in a car accident as they were on the way to the Leipzig trade fair. This left Greta to run the factory herself and also to bring up her two young sons. In the 1930s, things got more difficult for Greta. The rise of Nazism in the early 30s meant that as a young Jewish woman who was running her own factory and working in a modernist style, she was particularly vulnerable. In 1933, she was accused of anti-state sentiments and only narrowly avoided imprisonment. Hitler's Minister for Propaganda singled out her work, describing it as degenerate and inferior and some of her vases were included in the infamous Nazi exhibition of degenerate art in 1937. By this time, Greta was safe in England, however. Like many Jewish business owners, she'd been forced to sell her company at a loss before it was forcibly confiscated by the Nazis. She came to England, and she was aided in this by Harry Trethoen, who was a ceramics and glass buyer for the department store Heels, which had purchased many of her wares up until that date. Greta arrived in England in late 1936 on a one-month visa. To stay in England, she had to show that she had a job. And in this, she was aided by Harry Trothowan. He recommended her to Gordon Forsyth, who was head of the Stoke-upon-Trent Schools of Art. And Gordon Forsyth offered her a job at Burslem School of Art to teach painting. Using her contacts, Greta quickly obtained freelance work for various potteries in Stoke-on-Trent and also started work at the Minton factory, which had a long history of employing European designers. However, her designs with their simple forms, minimal decoration, were the absolute opposite of Minton's very traditional uh, type of pottery with elaborate painted decoration and heavy gilding. And in 1938, she left to set up her own factory in Summer Street in Stoke, the Greta Pottery. Here, she successfully produced her distinctive forms and designs, many of them based on her uh, designs that she had produced in Germany, until the outbreak of the Second World War, when government restrictions meant that the production of inessential decorated pottery was restricted. Greta's factory closed in the early 1940s, and she was never to run her own pottery factory again. In 1938, Greta had married her second husband, Howard Marks, who worked for Oxford University as an educator based in Stoke-on-Trent. Initially, they lived in Newcastle under Lyme in Lancaster Road, and the house still stands. But when the war came, they moved to live in the Staffordshire Moorlands and remained there until after the war, when they finally moved to London, where they remained for the rest of their lives. Greta continued to work with ceramics, she made some items of studio pottery, and she created many ceramic murals, but she increasingly concentrated on her painting, and she exhibited frequently, as well as teaching. She died in 1990, having received a long and honourable career, both as a pottery designer, as a factory owner, and as a very successful artist, all in her own right. Although this museum had acquired a number of pieces from Greta's factory,
factories uh, during the 1930s. The great majority of the pieces that we have here at the museum were given to us in the late 1980s by Greta Marx and her husband and by her daughter, Dr. Frances Marx. And we're very grateful to all three of them for helping to remember the importance of Greta Marx as a designer.